Welcome to the Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into important topics like creativity, personal development, marketing, health, spirituality, and so much more. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Now sit back and enjoy the show. Today, my special guest is Jonathan Kahn, and we're going to be discussing his latest book, The Paradigm, The Ancient Blueprint That Holds the Mystery of Our Times. Jonathan, thanks for joining us on today's show. Great to be here, Sean. A real blessing. So, The Paradigm, this is your fourth book, is that correct? Yeah, I think you're <laughs> I think you're counting better than I am. I think you're correct. Yes, yeah, The Harbinger, The Shemitah, The Book of Mysteries, and The Paradigm. Well, the, I, I had a similar kind of conversation with an author last week. I'm like, now this is your fourth book? He's like, like no, actually, it's my 14th book. So apparently, I, I can't always count <laughs> You're on either. top of it, though, with me. <laughs> so The Paradigm, it's another New York Times bestseller. And one of the things that is really intriguing about this book is you, ha- you share a revelation that's qu- causing quite another national stir. So start us off, set the stage a little bit. What is The Paradigm? Uh, well, imagine, Sean, if they discovered an ancient blueprint that lay behind everything that's happening now, the events of our times, the people of our times, actually so specific. It's about a 3,000 year old blueprint from the Bible that it actually gives the, not only the events, but the timing of the events, when they are to happen or when they have happened, um, down to the, the, in some cases, the day, even the hour, even the minute. Um, Imagine if the blueprint had actually revealed the the leaders of our time. I mean, the the what they would do, how long they would have on the national stage, their personalities, their actions, all that. Well, th- imagine if it could tell us uh, the outcome of, of elections before they came to pass. Well, that is what the paradigm is. The paradigm is a blueprint from the Bible, because God's in charge of all things, a blueprint of, of what is happening now, where we are, where we're going, past, present, and future. And it, in, in case, in some cases, it's so, um, I would say, specific that if we had known it, now I didn't know it. If you asked me two years ago, I wouldn't have known it. If we, if we had known it years ago, we could have actually put in your calendar, in your market, you could have marked the major events of our time down to the hour years before they took place. That's how kind of mind-boggling it gets. Well, we only have a brief time here this morning, so I want to get into some of the maybe characters, if you will, that you're going to introduce us to in the book. Um, so one of the one of the key things you start off with early in the book is um, the king and the queen. Tell, tell us about the king and the queen. To make sense of it, the, the, the big picture is that Ancient Israel is falling away from God, and it, it gets to a point where that fall accelerates. And there are people who rise to the throne who are now actively against God. They're actually, they're worshiping Baal or Baal, and that means child sacrifice. That means sexual immorality. And so it's being promoted from the throne. Well, in the same thing with America, we have also been falling away from God. Uh, there's been a national apostasy, and it's been, in, it's been intensifying. About a quarter century ago, it, we entered what was called the culture wars. And it began, the, it began with the rise of a man who was Bill Clinton, of course. Now, in the paradigm, the man is, the, is Ahab, Ahab, King Ahab. And he's a man who, he's, he's brought up about, he knows God from, he, it's, a, it's a culture that knows God, but he opposes the ways of God, and he actually is the first king to endorse child sacrifice. Well, we have Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, the mystery of Bill Clinton is Ahab. He's going to follow the paradigm of Ahab. He's going to endorse abortion or child sacrifice. He's going to endorse immor- uh, sexual immorality. He is also, there's, there's, a, there's a chapter in the book called The Days of the King. The question is, how long was Bill Clinton on the national stage? Well, he, he entered, the, he became a, a governor in 1979. He, he enters the national stage. 1979 until the end of his presidency, 2001. How many years? 22 years of Bill Clinton. Open up the Bible to Ahab, and it says Ahab reigned in Samaria for a period of 22 years. Same thing. But Ahab wasn't alone. He had help, of course. The queen's name was Isabel, or we know her as Jezebel. She grows up in a liberal culture. She worships. She's the daughter of the high priest of Ashtoreth, so she worships female power. She she marries uh, Ahab, moves to a conservative land, but she never adopts. She sees it as she's got to make a war against the conservative or religious values. Well, this is the mystery now of Hillary Clinton. And by the way, it's not about people. We're not against people. But this is the mystery of it. She will follow the mystery of Jezebel. She'll grow up in a cosmopolitan culture. She will wor- worship female power. She'll marry, move to the Bible Belt, marry Bill Clinton. 
different, but she'll never adopt the conservative or traditional values. She'll see them as a thing she has to war against. She actually makes a statement. She says, deep-seated religious beliefs have to be changed. I mean, I cannot think of a more Jezebelian statement. And together, she'll become the chief advocate. You know, Jezebel was the chief advocate of Baal worship. Uh, Hillary Clinton becomes the chief advocate of abortion in America. She was voted the champion of the century by Planned Parenthood. So you have this team, and this, and but it gets even more mind-boggling because the paradigm is going to give the exact dates of the scandals of the Clinton years and even beyond that. So we've touched on the king and the queen. Uh, talk to us about the nemesis. Okay. The, there is um, another man, another character in the ancient paradigm rises up in the days of Ahab, and he is an enemy, and that's nemesis. He is he he's going to threaten the nation with destruction, with invasion. Um, this is going to be the mystery of Osama bin Laden. In the days of the Clintons, this man rises up just like this ancient one. It actually the ancient nemesis actually gives the parameters of the name of Osama bin Laden. And at one point, Ahab has the chance to take him out, but he doesn't. He lets him go. God rebukes him. Well. Could that have happened? The 9-11 Commission found out that that Clinton had the chance to take out bin Laden nine times, but let him go. And in, as a result, in the Bible, calamity comes to the land. And, and actually, the paradigm is even going to give the, 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 the way that bin Laden is going to come to an end. It's going to happen through assassination. That's in the paradigm. It's gonna, it, gives the, it gives the timing of the assassination. It gives the way it's going to take place. But also, let me give you something that's really mind-boggling. They, in the paradigm, there's a. It's not just. It's not just um, apostasy. It's scandal. Ahab and Jezebel, days of scandal. There's a particular scandal uh, in the paradigm, and when it happens, the prophet Elijah uh, actually pronounces judgment on Ahab, and he. There, I won't go into the detail because of our time, but it, the point is this: Ahab repents, and then God says, "I'm going to delay the calamity on the nation." So there are. How long? There are three years. So you got the king repents. There's three years. Then a calamity comes to the nation. Did Bill Clinton never repent over the scandal? Finally, he did. It was in a White House gathering. What happens if you take that date, according to the paradigm, add the three years from the king's repentance? Could it bring us to some crisis? If you take that date, add the three years up from the king's repentance, it brings you to the date, September 11th, 2001, the day of calamity on the nation. And actually, it's going to give it the exact minute that it takes place. That's how, that's how amazing it is. Well, and we're, we're beginning to run short on time, so we're going to have to move towards wrapping up yes. here. Um, but when, when you think of, you share a lot more in the book past what we've talked about already, um, but when you think of our nation, you know, America, we're really at a crossroads right now. What would you say is the, the, the crux of the message that your book has for our country? Yeah, I will say in a quick nutshell that, that the paradigm goes all the way from what we just started. We haven't begun to say goes through. It has the mystery of Obama and it only goes to the mystery of Donald Trump, where we are right now. Donald Trump is in there. I mean, there's amazingly, amazingly so. And what I'll say is this. It's link, I'll just tell you this. It's linked to a man called Jehu. And what, what the significance of Jehu and Trump is, it's not about Trump, is that Jehu was, the, the nation was going to be sealed in apostasy, but God raises up this unlikely character, this warrior, kind of wild guy and named Jehu, and he gives the nation a window of time to repent. Well, that is the mystery of Donald Trump, without the detail. And so Donald, and actually he comes head to head with the former first lady. This is Jehu, head to head with Jezebel. So you got Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. So, so where we are right now, and there, there's a whole chapter at the end about what does the paradigm say about, what does it say about things to come? Where are we going? And what is our role? as believers, there's there's a paradigm for us in the paradigm called the Elijah paradigm. So I'll just say this. We are right now, the paradigm reveals we're in a window of time. There has to be revival. If there's not revival, America is going down and it heads to judgment. So this is the time where we have to pray, work for, and actually live as never before in revival. Because if we don't, it's a matter of life and death. So the paradigm, the paradigm gives this thing called the Elijah paradigm. So just say that that I won't, I can't go into the detail, but it gives the key of how to prevail. We'll just say this: we, if the dark is getting darker, it's time that the lights of God have to get brighter. If these are the days of Elijah, they are. But that means we have to become the Elijahs of the day. So this is it could be the greatest time, but it could also we're standing between life and death, and that's what the paradigm is there for. That's what it's warning. It gives warning about the future and also reveals where we're going. Well, Jonathan, thanks so much for ending us on such an encouraging word. Um, 
now I want to, I'm like three fourths of the way through the book. And so now I'm like, I got to finish reading. I got to finish reading. Uh, but for the listeners who want to find out more about you, find out more about the book, where, where can they pick it up online? The Paradigm is available everywhere. You can get The Paradigm online now on Amazon or anywhere. It's in every bookstore, Walmart. It's all there. So you get in touch with the ministry. They just remember we send out free gifts, prophetic updates, CDs, all that. Um, it's just remember it's hope of the world. If they go online, hopeoftheworld.org. They will get free gifts immediately, hopeoftheworld.org. Okay, awesome. Well, and as we do for every episode, we'll be sure to include links in the show notes, places where you can pick up a copy of the book, places where you can connect with Jonathan. Uh, it's time to bring this episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks to being a part of my conversation with Jonathan Kahn. Once again, our book today was The Paradigm, The Ancient Blueprint That Holds the Mystery of Our Times. Uh, to, connect, to connect with Jonathan and find out more about his new book, another place you can visit is theparadigmmystery.com. And Jonathan, I just want to say thanks so much for sharing with us today. It has been an honor to meet you and speak with you today. My honor to be with you. Keep up the great work, Sean. That's all for this episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show. If you have a question or comment, be sure to give me a shout-out on social media or send an email to show at seantabbitt.com. The intro and outro music is from the song titled Jesus Loves You, written and performed by my good friend Casper McLeod. It is from his album Faithfulness, which is available at theupperroomfellowship.org. Until next time, this is your host Sean Tabbitt, signing off. Mm-hmm.